Sunny skies, the smell of palm tree air. Looking back, I could never feel fair. The way the music has touched my soul. The way that the sound holds its control. But I've got a new way, a new way to choose. I'm gonna start running.
everybody how's it going dan higgins here uh, oh i got got tim's figure you're on and uh we're running about five minutes late so i apologize about that a little technical difficulties um so tim we got some good news we do well we, we're on <laughs> we're on and it's only five parts and uh hold on is that Louis? oh yeah yeah we do sorry yeah but i've been I'm, I'm still waking up from my nap uh, yes we do we do have some good news in fact well, we have some ma some excellent some magnificent well, some stupendous news the good news is it's only one o'clock in england <laughs> oh that's great news we, we love this news so for two for two on. weeks we've got this news yeah so uh, uh, Matthew Vandra said, please teach me things. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, probably not astronomy, but. Hey, so, so yeah, so, um, so on a, a serious note, um, Astroworld on Facebook um, has now uh, just surpassed the 500 member or follower or liker or whatever. 500 people are liking us now um, in a very short time. So that is some awesome stuff. So thank you everybody for the support, um, the following, the liking. Uh, don't forget us on YouTube. We're coming close on on 200 members on that, 200 subscribers. 200. That. Well done, so Dan. Well done, Astro. Well done. That. So hey, Tim, it's, it's all YouTube, brother. So so we, it's a team effort, and it's all it's all the guys that watch us. So it's well, uh, yeah, it's, we, the, it's the it's the viewers, isn't it? It's the people. Yeah, a absolutely. And if you hear a dog in the background, I apologize. The wife isn't home yet from work, so I just fed the dog, so they're a little bit crazy. So so I apologize about that. Um, and Jesse says hi. So hi, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Uh, I do 
have some somber um, news to report. Um, about I, ju I just read. I, ju I read a few bulletins uh, after my nap, Dan. Is this? Are you going to say what I think you're going to say? Probably. If you, if you mm -hmm. read it on cloudy nights, it's been uh, circulating around the astronomy networks already. Yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, Rockland Community College uh, decided to close up shop and not allow any um, gatherings over the amount of 50 people. So that being said, um, and for those of you guys that don't know, uh, Rockland Community College is the place where uh, NEF is hosted. And so that being said, uh, NEF will not be, um, it will be postponed, hopefully. Um, yeah, right yeah, now yeah. It's canceled. Yeah, sure, sure. Can canceled postponement hopefully and what about the hint maybe you know more than me of um a, a, a virtual so it's not going to be the same Aha. but it's better than nothing a virtual session a try first try at uh at doing, at doing a contingency for um an astronomy festival online what what can you tell us dan um so on march 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 no april, <laughs> april yeah 4th. yeah yeah. Um, one day only. Uh, there's going to be a NEF virtual um, gathering, I guess, online. And they're, they are going to be honoring stuff as far as I know. And there's more news. This is still early. But from what I gathered is they're going to be doing some speakers. Uh, they're going to be doing door prizes. Cool. They're going to be doing some yeah. stuff online. So, so I guess they're like, if you have ever been to NEF, they have the theater there. Um, so I think they're going to be still doing their theater stuff, theater stuff, um, I which see. means guest speakers, door prizes, a couple other things. Now, I don't know if they're going to be doing any, I know a lot of people, one of the big things with Neef is getting deals on, on the next mm. technology and the next stuff. I yeah. don't know what. And I don't know how, and I got to turn off this scrolling thing because that's starting to annoy me. It's under my name. So I got to turn that off. Um, the, uh, I don't know if there's going to be any deals. The only thing I can really think of, um, as far as the deal is concerned, they, I, I think it's going to be some sort of, uh, standard, like 10, 15% off. Who knows? It's not going to be like okay. the kind of haggling that you're going to be. Using. <laughs> yeah. So, that we love. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sure. But, sure. I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to haggle uh, <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, th that's, what, that's what we got right now. So okay. So more news to come. And... Yeah, sure, sure. Well, you've, <laughs> your ear is closer because you, you have the, the uh, well, you're, over, you, you're, you're in the zone. First of all, you're in the zone. And uh, you know far better than I what's going on. So I really appreciate that. It was a shock. I must admit, although I guess we could possibly see it coming with the contingency plans as governments in different countries take their different uh, stands against this horrible thing. But uh, what, what we're hoping for here, of course, is the practical is PAS, Practical Astronomy Show. And what we're is only, that? Well, that's, um, that's uh, Saturday week, so the 21st of March. Okay. And we're hoping, because we're... Um, I mean, I'm really speaking out of turn here. I'm not a scientist or a medical world health organization spokesperson, but we're behind perhaps in the scheme of things in the UK, um, in in the, the, the march of, of this particular um, thing. Uh, and so we're hoping that we can still gather without being infectious, obviously, the priority, and have our show because it's so important. I know, I mean, how much... Bigger. We're expecting perhaps maybe three thousand people to walk through the door at Paz. How wow. many? Pe we, how many people? Which is which is great for us uh, in in the UK for a, a niche hobby. For for Neef, do, have you any idea of what sort of footfall? How many bodies you were expecting? Oh, man. How, how many got, happy smiley faces? Close to if not more than 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 yours. It's got to be. It's got to be in the thousands of people that show up. Sure, um, sure, you know, sure. They, well, I would have expected, right, okay, okay, I was hoping you were going to stick, stick a note on it and uh, show us how it's done. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know the exact 
attendance figures mm -hmm. of uh, of Neef. I'm not privy to that. I, I right. the only thing I can tell you is that I have worked at Neef for the past six years, uh, five or six years, mm -hmm. and um, I mean I'll tell you right now, just coming through the yeah. the, the booth that we have there is is got to be uh, you know. It's, is it an all day flow? An yeah, all day flow. I mean, of I, you got your peaks and valleys, but it's yeah. uh, Saturday usually after like one, two o'clock, mm -hmm. uh, all the way straight till six o'clock, and then Sunday all day. All day, so, so yeah, 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 yeah. So from ten to six or whatever it is. So it's uh -huh. it's it's unfortunate that we're not going to have it. Hopefully by the fall, this will all blow over, mm. um, and you know, hopefully it doesn't get to be as dire. I, I know. Uh, uh, Angela Merkel has had some dire reports uh, about Germany, about 60 to 70 percent of the people she thinks is going to contract the virus. Oh. Big thing. Um, yeah. At least that's what yeah. she reported. So, I mean, it, a lot of stuff going on and we know it's uh, definitely impacting the, uh, uh, the the astronomical community and the events that we have. But it's also affecting on a so global so. scale that yeah. that is uh, kind of uh, disturbing a little bit to all of us. So. Uh, just okay. uh, hunker down, everybody. And that being said, mm. good mm. thing that astronomy, when you're doing your astrophotography and your visual astronomy, you're not with anybody. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so um, you know, sanitize, wash your hands, do whatever you got to do, and just be safe. That being said, we're going to go down with tonight's show because I know Tim yeah, yeah. is yeah, exhausted. Much, so. Um, <laughs> he is exhausted and um, uh, thank you guys for showing up right now we got uh, anywhere between who's, 8 and 15 who's people here? popping in and out who's uh, here Dan we got uh, Matthew who's Van Gruff. Uh, they, he was uh, he's, he was shocked that they already stated that it is cancelled uh, and it right. will be only online now um, I don't right. know if he's saying that you know it's, it's tough to read these things uh, you know but uh, I don't know if he yeah, I'm shocked upset, too. Or whatever, but um, uh, Jesse, uh, who is uh, somebody who I met at Neef last year. Um, oh, okay. Hi, and, Jesse. Uh, she gets to watch us tonight. She's actually on her way to bed. Um, <laughs> no, she's usually on her way to bed. Uh, but <laughs> since the school is closed until Monday for deep cleaning, uh, <laughs> since a staff member has come in contact with somebody. Um, yes. From a class three country, I'm not sure what exactly. I guess that's the bad one. The bad one, I guess. Yeah. I guess class one is super bad, and I guess mm -hmm. class three is, you know, in the middle. And I guess DevCon five is the worst. I, I don't know. <laughs> I no, well, it. it's hard to keep up, isn't it? It's a whole yeah, emerging. Okay, so, so I, school, so school's out. So but, my friend, uh, my friend but Diego gone. said, "Get the show going." <laughs> so, it's going, so, it's going. So, so, so it's going <laughs> this, is, this is the show. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, Matt, you're still here. Jesse, you're still here. Um, if you saw the promo uh, uh, video, uh, the video or, or the opening credits, um, this is a potluck night. So yeah. basically, um, we're going to talk about whatever you guys want us to talk about, as long as we know what we're talking about. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> so um, well, yeah, should, should, should I, should, let's roll the topic in there. I've got a prop on the desk. Should we, should we roll the sure. topic in there? Let's roll yeah, one absolutely. in. Absolutely. We, we can go. Let's, let's try a book. So, we, well, this is Cold Plug of the Week, so I didn't expect this one to come up. Cold Plug of the Week, a book, a good old honest astronomy book. This, dark uh, art or magic bullet? Huh? All right. Mm, mm. Is it a dark art or a magic bullet? Steve Richards um, wrote a fabulous book called Making Every Photon Count, which was a kind of a beginner's intermediate road into astronomy and then imaging, making your photons count, snappy title, and uh, he did very well. And he became a real master guru of imaging. And um, okay. he was badgered to write another book, and there's some nice credits in here from his, his chums, some more heroes of imaging in his buddies, in his peer group, and, uh, and he wrote this lovely book, Dark Art or Magic Bullet, and it's not particularly expensive, and there's plenty of places you can get it direct from his website, uh, Chanctonbury Observatory. You'll, you'll find him, Steve Richards, you'll find him online, you'll pick up the link. But this book is really good because, I think, because although I'm Pix Insight, Photoshop, 
and uh, Lightroom. Lightroom's very important for my yeah. astro processing because it's got it's got children's uh, intelligence level sliders, which <laughs> make things fantastically <laughs> easy. And an undo button. Uh, yeah, undo yeah. is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Oh, it is, isn't it? It is. I'm showing my age now. Control Z, take me back. Take me back from whatever I've done. So, yeah. Um, but this book is all about, uh, or very much based on good old honest Photoshop. So, it, it's a level playing field. And he covers every aspect of things that uh, a pixel site strip might do, for instance, or an actual pixel, astro pixel processor. Uh, yeah, automated, oh, it doesn't it whiz along? Astro Pixel Processor, highly impressive piece of software. But in that there book there, um, it covers covers things step by step in Photoshop, which I must admit is a bit of a bit of a head fluff for me. Um, but yeah, just thought there we go on on the bits, and I I throw in a good book on uh, Astro Processing using the generic Photoshop. Okay. Back at back at me. No, you know the. Photoshop, uh, you know, you know, Photoshop does some, some really good stuff. Mm. It does some really. It's got they got lo lovely uh, astronomy actions or astronomy tools. I think it's called. Um, but, yeah, tools, plugins. What what do we call yeah. these things? They're, well, they're plugins. Yeah, they're act actually. Yeah, yeah. I think they're like twenty one dollars for like thirty or forty plugins that you can actually mm. sit there and space noise reduction and make stars bigger make stars smaller whatever you want to do and yes. and it's all macros that uh, i forget who the author of this this group of tools was um but uh it's it was it's actually kind of cool it's called astronomy tools and you download it from his website. i think it's like 20 bucks he also does um i think he also does astro flat Pro, I think he also does that. Uh, right, that's yes, that's mentioned in in that their book. So, so as I say, I'm, I find um, Photoshop the hardest of all programs it to is. get my head around. <laughs> um, but the effects of using it now would this be an assumption or a step too far that everything Pix Insight can do, or the others that for if you're clever enough and can roll your sleeves up and get in there the pics in so, uh, sorry the photoshop can do it, it all it can yeah. it can stack it can layer it can gradient it can noise reduction it can mask it mm -hmm. can it can do it all but you've got to have the skills these things aren't um as cut and dried as a uh, a pix inside script for instance a batch pre-processing type mm -hmm. script yeah absolutely i mean uh uh, there's one thing that you know. In all honesty, there were before Pix Insight. That's all you had, was right? Photoshop, and you had that learning curve that was dreadful. I mean, I'm still, yeah. I, I, I still gave up on, I gave up on Photoshop because I, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I just need. I, I like to hit a button and it works. <laughs> you know, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like that too. It doesn't have, it doesn't really work like that in the, in the world, does it? Or, or be shown. And actually, even when I've had back in the day, I. I um, I've had people sit on a desk and show me their way, and if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't map to my way, it doesn't go in. Um, no. So there's a segue, perhaps then, from from a book, from book page learning to tutorial learning. I do have two screens. I often will have the tube open and the tute on one screen and the program on the other. And even then, I'm looking at the tutorial going, right, step one, two, three, turn back to my program and go, oh. <laughs> back to the YouTube, step one, yeah. two, three, back to it. So I'm making notes between a YouTube program and applying it. Maybe half, maybe I've got the brain of a goldfish. Uh, sorry, goldfish. <laughs> Hey, listen. You know, you got a you got a bigger brain than I. So, so. That's, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, clearly, no, no. I was born. I was born on the wrong side of the pond. You well, got the genetics, and I got the other one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you got the golden shores there. I gotta watch the comments. I, I close the comments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah well, comments. I got a bunch of comments here. Okay. Um, I left all of my grading at work, so oh darn, I have time to try and process some images. All right, that was Jessie. She, she's not doing any Good. work at home. Don't do work at home, guys. <laughs> I know, oh. I do it too. I do it too. I work at home too. 
Astra, 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 the dog is driving me nuts. Astra, be quiet. Come here, girl. Now, all right. Uh, yep, here she comes. You gonna come here? Come here, pal. There you go. This is one of my dogs. This is a quiet one. Oh well, get him. Oh well, my dear. That's a quiet one. Oh, there, there's a loud one. Come here, loud girl. Come on up. Astra, come on. No, she don't want to. She don't want anything to do it. Anyway, back to economy. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, Sweet. Matthew, if I only had images to process, everything went wrong last night. I wasted three hours trying to get pictures. Right, oh, dear, well, Matthew. Oh, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get to you. Uh, that, that sounds like a good thing to talk about. Mm. Um, yeah, what went wrong and how? And let's, let's share that moment. Let's see. Jessica said that was the first book I read on astrophotography. It really oh, helped lay book. down the basics and demystify mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Matthew's back again. Hey, Matthew. I got a question regarding AP, and this is, I just picked up a Rasa 8. I live in Hawaii. Oh. Wow, so you're, you're, <laughs> oh, well. you're, you're doing <laughs> well, you good so far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do I need a dew shield heater, or is that meant mostly for cold weather areas? No, it's it, not right. meant for cold weather areas. Yeah. Um, you know, you're probably going to need a phone. You're really going to have to judge. And Tim, if you want to hit on this. Well, you'll really soon know. Your, uh... <laughs> you'll soon know. For yeah, first well, night out, you'll know if you need to, uh, to help with your due. I hope that's not why you wasted three hours because you couldn't see nothing out of the Rasa. So, so <laughs> you know, you're all fogged up. But um... well, if it is due, it's easily solved. Um, and start with. A due shit, you know. If 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 money, since you've just bought a razor, you've either got more money to burn, or that's all your money burn. Um, so there's a there's a couple of schools of thought. You could you could start on the El Cheapo. You could make your own due sealed uh, for the end of it. I mean, even sort of cardboard or camping insulated camping mats and and things like that are all extremely useful. A real due sealed kind of twenty bucks. But if you get into the the dew heating um, type systems, then go, go go middle of the road or 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 decent. Don't buy too cheap if you get into dewing. Um, but yeah, with the with a rasa, you've got rasa. You've got a nice big glass plate, which is uh, very which is a magnet for for droplets of condensing water. So mm -hmm. yeah, you you will know very quickly if. Uh, if Jew is your enemy, but Hawaii, and yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to process that. Hawaii and uh, Raza, yeah, let us know how you, uh, please let us know how you get along, uh, but be gentle with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, you're, you're going to touch it. Well, put it this way you got a great scope, mm. you got a great place. Mm. I mean, I just hope you have a nice mount. <laughs> you, know, you know, I hope you're not on a, you know, an aluminum tripod. Yeah, and, please, uh, <laughs> please, yeah, yeah. No AC uh, stuff. And if if you're if you're really gonna get into the astrophotography thing, you, you're on the right track as far as I mean. If this is your first scope, I think you got a little learning curve ahead of you. Uh, but um, but I, I think yeah, that, good fun one. Good fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. As, as as long as you're you know on an equatorial mount. Um, you don't need any hyperstars or anything. You're running at what f2, uh, you know, you, you have 400 and something millimeters. You got this nice big field of view going. So, I mean, you're gonna be set, you're gonna be fine. Get a nice guy camera, get Easy stream. a cooled camera, please. If you if you got a Rasa, actually, do you really let's think about this? Yeah, do, do you, you really, really even need, need a cool cooled camera, camera on a Rasa? Yeah, no, not necessarily. In actual, in actual fact, I have on my desk. I have on my desk something, where has it gone? Here it is. Here it is. These are lovely. So this here, what, while we're there, that's an Altair um, fan cord. So it hasn't got a full Protec in it, but it has got a fan and a heat sink. And so that's a 183 sized cam. So normally a 183 barrel on a Raza is going to be quite a bit bigger than that. I mean, it probably doesn't make any difference because it's within the, I guess it's within the limits of the central obstruction. But that is a tiny little fully fledged 183 with a cooling system stabilization. So it doesn't have a full protect, but it does have a fan. 
So there, just as you touched on that, okay. do you even do you so do you even need a fan? At thirty seconds, you can't see much glow on that. Does a razor yeah. need much more than thirty seconds? I, I I don't think so. I mean I mean I you know the person to, to the person to ask would be Chuck Ayub. That would be the person. Ah, uh, yes. He he is the, the the guy that's doing all the Rasa stuff right now, and he's right. he's got like four A pods. I think he's up to now. Oh, he's, he's, he, yes. Uh, he guy, needs a bigger wall. He needs a bigger <laughs> glory wall. <laughs> I'm telling you, but um, uh, he does some unbelievable work, Chuck. Yeah. If you if you haven't checked out his YouTube stuff, um, or his photographs, check it out. He's a yeah. good guy. He's a really nice guy. Um, uh, you know, but he t he does some awesome stuff. So yeah, um, do yourself a favor at whatever stage of processing uh, you're at. Um, have have a look at his YouTube channel, and certainly if you're embarking on it, or if you're new to things like Pixinsight, Insight, then uh, Chuck's YouTube channel is a um, mm -hmm. it's a reference library. Actually, actually, I go back to it, you know, back and back. Sure, I mean, I think it's called. Uh... Chuck's Astrophotography, I think it's called on YouTube. Okay. Um, let's you. see. So, I love seeing others work. Um, mm. I got the RASA mounted on an AVX. Um, I have a Williams Optics 71 and an 8-inch nice. Celestron Newt as well. Yeah, but um, put, them all, put them all on at once. Yeah. He's got. I think he's also got a 183 Pro cooled. So. <laughs> so all oh, right, you've got everything. Everything you could possibly want. Yeah, yeah. We 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 uh, we stand by open open mouthed for your. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm in Hawaii with a Rasa and a 183 cool camera. <laughs> mm. I ain't mm. never coming home. <laughs> mm. Um. Replying to Matthew, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing the option to post a picture in the comments. I, I don't know. I'll have to check that out, Jesse. Cool. Um, maybe during a live show you can. You could reply to it later with it. I'm not sure. So uh, we'll check that out. Um, actually, I'll check it out right now and find out what's going on with that. And let me minimize this. My, my, my doggies. Yeah, Lovely it's, having it's it live. It's live, so I'm not. I'm not sure why it's not Jesse. Man, that might be a Facebook glitch. So I apologize Lovely about having that. Technical department, Dan. Thank you. I'm doing absolutely that? nothing. It's lovely having a technical department. I'm doing absolutely nothing. And, you, and you're the tech guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, oh, you can't hear. You would have to PM me. This is what went wrong. I went out to I can't pronounce it. Uh, Kapolei, I guess in Hawaii. Uh, I got completely set up, went to attach my camera, and forgot the Rasa camera adapter plate. Oh. I then drove home, drove 20 yeah. minutes back to Hawaii to get all set up, realized my pole master cable wasn't there. And then I tried uh. plate solving, but I couldn't get the guide scope to focus. It was just a mess. It, lo it looks like he just uh, spent two hours trying to get everything to work properly. Uh, you, Matt, I hear you, brother. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a story. I get so I go and I have for my visual, man, we're not even doing talking actual photography. Uh, Dennis, I know we were just talking about NIAC is canceled. Leaf is canceled. And so we just spoke about it for about 10 minutes. So it's horrible. I know. Um, but um, I, so I, I was going, I, we were looking for some dim planetary nebulas. Now I have an 18 inch F2 obsession telescope. Um, and for those of you guys that know obsession telescopes, it's, it's a trust T telescope where it's got tubes it's got an upper cage at the top and the mirrors at the bottom so whatever so i go and i'm all psyched and i throw everything in my car and i grab the telescope i grab the telescope out and i got a nice 22 inch bass drum case that has the upper two i can't take that out i take my my counterweights i take everything out and i don't have the tubes to put from the lower to the upper <laughs> <laughs> and everything back in the car and, and that was the end of that night so, so I, I, I hear you man I hear you it's, it's, we've yeah. all done it right? oh yeah and, and we'll continue to do that we'll continue to, to do just that um, we, we had a kind of we were finding our feet uh, on the first couple of episodes the first couple of runs of the show 
Yeah, if it, if it can go wrong, it will. And you can probably see, can you see all the cables hanging up? That's the only way I can rationalize my, well, here we go with Segway. U, USB cable storage. I hang mine over a curtain pole. Um, how do you manage yours? I've tried everything. I've tried keeping USB cables in a drawer, but I might mentally I lose track of them. I've tried keeping them individually in sections in a compartmentalized case, still lose track of them. And coiling them up all the time means that then when you want to use them, they're all cold. So I now leave them hung. So there, there's my place behind me, hung over a curtain pole. How there do you, you keep your USB cables? Um, well... It, in the drawer of shame. Yeah, I'll show you. Do. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't actually prevent me oh. from forgetting a cable, but I do know where they all are. So I can't hear you yet, but, but it's a yeah, complete no mess. <laughs> what you got? It's a complete mess, and they're all Velcro tied, kind of. Ah, these are, yes, yes, all managed. So these are the sets then for... So you can't forget something. I still forget stuff. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. yeah. so, you know, yeah. when, you, when you're cold and your your you know your wires don't like kind of wrap like this anymore because they're frozen, or gotcha. so, you know. So I mean, yeah. I I kind of with well, the eagle it? with the eagle it helps a lot. Oh yeah. Oh, did oh right. Have you gone for? Um, did you go through the process of buying short? Or I just did. swapping out, you may already have short cables, of, of, of changing to short, what you might get. Ah, there you go. Yeah, what you might get. Yes, the custom. This is what I use for the Echo. Um, some of them you can't, you, so you got to kind of, like this, um, this is a power cable for my uh, focus controller, so I kind of had to kind of... Oh, okay, some you've got to do there. Yeah, because they're... they're, they're, they're anyway. Ah, yeah, I don't know how to print those Eagle. on. No, you can't yeah. it. And I, I, I mean, I guess I could. I know I have an extra one that I could. It's three pins inside, and it's got a little bump, so you can only put it in one way. But the other side's just a 2.1. So it's yeah. not, you know. They, I think, yeah. yes, I'm sure some, some clever person could. Some clever person would be crimping their own. Yeah, I'm not I'm not crimping that one. That one I'm no. not doing. I'll, I'll do I'll do Cat5, Cat6, phone wire. Mm. I'll do all that stuff. But I'll, cable, I'm not doing I'm not doing that. Um Dennis said again, NIAC was just cancelled. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What do you guys... Uh, Jesse wants to know, uh, what are your guys' thoughts on an imaging Newtonian? I really wanted to jump up to around 800 millimeters. I've used a Newt visually, but not for AP. I'm currently using a 350 focal length APO. Okay. They're bigger. So straight away, yeah, they're bigger. All of the things that, um, all, all of your issues and problems are suddenly multiplied. We, 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 Dan and I love to tease that the only thing you would ever want is a nice, neat, small to medium APO refractor. And we tease because there's, there are beautiful options out there that do wonderful things. And I was actually talking to a friend of mine about picking up someone's big, unwanted imaging newt because you can pick them up secondhand quite cheaply mm -hmm. just have a number of frustrations uh, this race to go faster and faster puts a lot more demands on optics and especially things like focusing sure. so do you really want to run a, a f4 for instance whereas your imaging apo is probably f5 and a bit um half as fast straight yeah. away with half of half of the potential i could be talking about my my uh my hat again but half of the, the demand much less demands on the focusing and much less demands because it's got a lot less to, to do uh the actual mounting of the of the piece of equipment it's a much much bigger item it will suffer them from windage and I love this word, leverage, not leverage, much better, leverage is much better, exactly that mo moment of, of movement. It's got a lot uh, of weight. I was, I was doing the wave, I'm sorry. Oh, ah, I did, oh I could take, <laughs> do you know what, the resolution of the screen is much better, that's a good way. I can't, I, no, mine's, mine's a bit lame, no, I think Dan's won the wave there by miles, right? That, I, Dan's blown me away. 
We should have more competitions. So yeah, you're imaging new is for money, value for money, big tick. Uh, light gathering, double big tick. Mm -hmm. Potential for for the for huge um, for for huge return on joy and satisfaction, triple tick. But the problems you're going to have, unless it's already got an upgraded or a really nice focuser, work to do there. Uh, you're going to have to. What do what do you suffer from? The colours all right, but they suffer from um, uh, they're not flat field, are they? So you need you need a you need a field flattener, a corrector. That's a heavy piece of glass. Your camera sits at a funny end. They're awkward. Yeah, where do you where do you sight your camera? You're going to have it at the end and have your leads dangling down and yeah, they're awkward. They're bigger, but they are they are cheap and cheerful. Eight hundred mil range on a frac. What are we looking at there, Dan? Four five inch frac. Yeah. Fifteen hundred yeah. to two to two thousand bucks new minimum. More yeah, like, like three for a good eight hundred. Uh, compared uh, with five hundred bucks. So. Well, the um uh, eighty. The ADI uh, Esprit that I have is sixteen hundred. Um, the mm -hmm. I think the what is it the what's the focal the, length of that? It's not quite eight hundred, is it? No, it's half four hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there you go. Uh, let's see. I think the uh, one uh, the Esprit one hundred, or is it a one hundred two? Um, That's probably about seven hundred and something. I would think focal length. No, the one hundred two is uh, the Esprit is like twenty four hundred. Um, and then sorry, that's sorry, that's that's bucks. I was saying focal length to get to Jesse's oh, yeah, no, no, focal length, is, uh, focal yeah, but length. yeah, in, in, in an 800, you want to do an 800 focal length, and you, you want the the 127 is 952. Hmm. So, uh, 102 or 127, you got either four or five inch. So, I mean, you know, you know, the, the only four and a half inch thing that you're going to get isn't a new, I think I, they don't sell many four and a half inch refractors. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, my friend uh, Minos does uh, well, most of his imaging out of a 130 newt. Right, right. Here, good. And, I'm, I'm glad you said that because, I, I, again, I, for the for the people with, um, with, a, with, with less of a budget, that 130 newt, has an incredible it punches way above its weight so swinging back to the things for the new light gathering um un, unbeaten isn't it value for money for, for your light bucket unbeaten value for money if you can't we haven't touched collimation yet if you've got the knack of collimation your quids in if you can handle the weight that you're good about your setup and balancing quids in Mm -hmm. So, uh, and if you've got something that isn't doesn't suffer from windy, maybe you've got a wall or a, an obsy or shedsy thing to yep. put your newt in. Then again, your quids in. So, for five hundred bucks, you could be challenging a five thousand pound apron. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, that's what I think of newts. Let's see, then, we got another. Yeah. We got another bunch of comments here. We got. Uh, Mark Ellis is on. He said, "Evil hey, world." How you doing, Mark? Uh, Matthew replied to Jesse. I gave I gave up messing with trying to image with my newt. That's why I got the Rasa. It gets too windy to try to image with the newt, so I'll use yep. it for visual and use my Rasa and Star uh, uh, the Williams Optic seventy one for imaging. So no, yeah, nice. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's that's a very nice way of using all the equipment in for its for its best maximizing the use of his existing investment there no, good I, man I, do, I don't know if mark is joking because he's been on before i think he is but i'm not sure because i don't see a smiley face but he wants to know what our thoughts on about uh schmick cassegrains well we love them they're the most they're the most beautiful <laughs> um sexiest looking piece of marketing ever absolutely uh, yeah uh absolutely. and dan and i both threw um, probably more than double the cost of the initial purchase price on upgrades <laughs> on our SCTs, oh and then God. sold them and got little refractors. You know, if that's, it, we we blast SCTs say? all the time. We blast them all the time, <laughs> and you know what? It's not fair. 
A no, I love them. They're my favourite looking. They're my favourite telescope. I, oh, I it's guess. Like Canon. It's nice. It's small. It's good. It's nice. You know, but uh, there's such. If you're, I would not suggest. And I know we spoke about this before. And I know you'll think the same way. If you're just starting out at astrophotography, stay away from the Schmidt. Mm. Stay away from it. It's a huge learning curve. Um, yeah. And that's just my. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. It took me forever to deal with the issues of number one, mirror flop, number two, do, number three, polar alignment. I mean, I could go on and on and on about mm. certain things. And God forbid, if you're if you're on a you Schmidt get, and a yeah. foot mount, mm. I mean, uh, forget it. I mean, it's it's a, it's a lot want. of stuff to do. If you get. I <laughs> do you agree with that, Tim? I'm sorry, I'm going. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah, of course I do. But I still, I'm, I'm hugely fond <laughs> of the of the genre, and will fight their corner forever, despite having had a case of the shifts for six months, shifting myself every time I used it. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah, they, they do. They, I mean, you can fall in love with the probably a bit like a classic car or. or Perhaps, or a, a temperamental horse, or so, or a, or a wife. Uh, even you have to learn to love all of the uh, the challenges, as well as the the, the happy parts. So the happy parts of my SCT were it was quite it's a nice compact shape, um, mm -hmm. very it, very all right. We're not talking the performance. I liked owning it because it was a great thing to go. I really like the look of that. Clever, <laughs> mar clever marketing on its jewel port. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but it was a light bucket uh, uh, and the reducer you know by the time you, you start buying these add-ons put that reducer on it f6.3 yeah eight, eight inches of light gathering power nice. you know corrected and flattened um you, you know you've got a nice telescope there the limitations were as as you know you've you've correctly said Dan the limitations were as I as I after I got my first picture of Orion I wanted to uh, I wanted to understand why every time I focused things fell to pieces or as the telescope moved things be, fell to pieces or why I couldn't get longer than a 15 a 15 second sub on that focal length going up the stairs of of, yeah. of stress oh, yeah. Uh, so Absolutely. yeah if it, so my next scope after an eight inch SCT was a 71 millimeter apo refractor oh. so back to you know to a baby scope and i've got to say because pretty pictures was what what i was after i haven't missed the sct once apart no. from the feeling of ownership of it and probably views of the moon so, and as you know i don't really no. look at things through the eyepiece anymore so a view of the moon and I'm an astronomer, so I don't have friends to go, Paul, look at that. <laughs> no, no, not many of us do. So it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have my next door neighbor. Hey, hey, Scott, what's going on? You want to go out with the telescope? What, are you kidding me? <laughs> that doesn't happen. You get, it's no. a very, very, uh, I guess it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a different niche of people that kind of, yeah. uh, you know, you know, they, they usually don't live next to each other. They're in separate towns. You know, yeah, maybe just... a handful of people per town maybe are into mm -hmm. it. You know, and mm -hmm. other people aren't crazy enough to go outside at twelve degrees to go see something or take a picture of something. Um, well, I suppose I wouldn't stand in waders in a freezing cold river, <laughs> flicking a fly on a string backwards <laughs> and forwards trying to hook a fish. And I know yeah. that that's fascinating to millions. Oh, yeah. so it's a, it has a far wider, uh, a broader appeal. Fishing has a far broader appeal, I would guess, than astroimaging. You know, it's funny that in New York, they sell the uh, the permits to go on the beach, and it's almost mm. the same permit. It's 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 a stargazing and fisherman permit. So, right. so it's almost the same thing. But uh, yeah, we Billy got, no we got a lot of comments coming across. Oh, um, hit, hit us with the comments and, uh, um, before I dive off. Matthew Vandro said it's uh, the spherical aberration is what we were looking for. Before. Spherical so, aberration, thanks. That's, thank that's you what we were much. looking for. Um, Jesse Wenke, uh, thank you so much for the input. I definitely need to work on my focusing. It's definitely gotten infinitely better, but that does need to be a consideration. I'm still arm wrestling with the autofocus in SGP. 
Um, we'll yeah, get, we'll, I did. We'll talk yeah, about I that did for too. A bit. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I fought with that. Some people get the get it straight. I think I had too much uh, play in my focuser to get repeatability. Yeah, uh, have, have the back. focuser. Or? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it could be in the fo in the in the motor unit. Could be in the, uh, the the focuser itself. I had to use the extension kit on that okay. particular focus. Mind you, it was a solid tube, so it shouldn't have added anything to it. But no. anyway, I, I didn't get the. I've actually got. I say gone back. I enjoy using a baton off mask, and because of the setter, I'm, I'm going like at my my. Uh, that's a, a tick and a Tourette there. It's not. It's my my equipment is literally just through a door there and in in the garden in a shed. So yeah. I have a very easy, you know, focusing for me. It really is f five steps and I'm in my observatory and I can make very quick and rapid. So this is this is this is my warm room. You know, my house and my office is a warm room to a, a, a detached observatory shed. So doing my focusing, strictly I don't need uh, an autofocuser. Probably the probably the one thing that niggles me about not using the autofocuser at the moment, and I'm not seeing it, is later on when I'm at longer focal lengths, okay. I will probably see the wobble that I'm introducing as I touch the equipment. But okay. I don't I don't see that at the moment. I've got quite a big mount. It's not overloaded at all. So when I'm focusing, I don't see the old. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do you remember all that touch, touch and settle, isn't it? Touch it and then wait for everything to settle down. So I'm not seeing any of that. My my rig's rock solid, so I use a baton off mask and a thingy. So yeah, um, what are you using? You you obviously use a motor focuser, Dan. Yeah. Have yep. you had problems getting your V curve? Um, well, the one thing I did, um, finally, I, I kind of figured it out. Now, SGP is a little, a little weird with its autofocus routine, from, at least from my, from my experience. Um, <laughs> first things first with the, with the focuser, and, and this maybe should be unsaid, but maybe not. But what, what, um, uh, from, and I may be saying this backwards, so you guys will have to excuse me. It's one way or the other, but um when you start with the autofocus routine sgp likes to take it a little bit out of focus first yes it does yeah that's and, right you have to you have to half out back, the stuff yeah and then come back and then get it to your smallest either half flux diameter fwhm whatever you got whatever whatever um um algorithm you're using for your focus then it goes down, it goes down to the smallest possible number, and then it goes back in focus. So you get that nice U curve. So you're in a focus, out of focus, and it does the average and it puts you back in the middle. Now, yeah. if you're not at a space on your focuser where the SGP uh, drivers can actually pull that focuser in, if you're starting at zero, it's going to fail. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. So what, what I did was when, when I knew that I was in focus at one day, whatever, I, I just took the number down on the focuser widget. I took the number yeah. down, I put it in my head, and then yeah. before I started imaging, I would go to that focus point, you gotcha. know, and, and then let SGP take over from there. And then... As know, a somewhere... known mean starting point. Yeah, you know, gotcha. somewhere, in the, you, know, you know, again, you know, that also depends on temperature and stuff like that, you know, yeah. gonna sit, you know. But, uh, you know, the whole thing is at least you got a nice little start. So I know mm -hmm. that in the summer, I'm at 4,200 on my focuser. In the winter, I'm at 3,900. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you're, so, yeah, so SGP isn't hunting for focus. The routine is starting close. In the, in, yeah, close to it in, in the playing field. Okay, you know, that's, that's interesting. Another point to add about your focuser is that it is a movement. Excuse me. Yes, a, moonlight. a moonlight. Yep. Mm. I it's think that's light. important. I think that's important to mention because I've had a moonlight. You have a moonlight. Amy Little, Amy Astro has a moonlight. Mm -hmm. What do you say about moonlights, Dan? I, I, I love them. I have not had a problem at mm. all. Zero issues. Um, Ron uh, puts out, and Ron at Moonlight, 
puts out an awesome product for a decent price. I mean, I, I can't say a bad thing about it. I mean, you get the same thing with, like, uh, uh, Starlight Instruments. Uh, you know, you, you, you go to them, you're going to spend an extra two, three hundred dollars. That's, yeah, price. that's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you, Dan. You know, spend the extra, spend the extra on a moonlight if you Oh, no, no, if you the can. moonlight's cheaper. So, sorry, I beg your pardon. It, com, on the moonlight compared with many other yes, yeah, offerings. Yeah. If, if, you, if you're going into the astrophotography realm of all these extra stuff that we got to get, um, yeah. first thing, don't don't spend whatever you can on the mount. You got to spend what you got. You need to have a decent mount. After yeah. that, you know, you got your scope, and then there's a focuser. I mean, that that's that's well going good. going right back on that particular to, to episode one. Really, it doing yeah. it all again. I would buy a nice mount, probably probably one of these. Uh, it's, we mustn't name drop too much, must we? I don't know because because we I don't have any theories with them. But one of these red mounts that don't need that don't have to do a meridian flip. <laughs> Yeah, well, I would you got that kind of put, money. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, I would yeah. probably go for something like that and a DSLR or a DSLR lens and a little camera rather than rushing into the... Te yeah, I saw the telescope. That's all yeah. I saw when I started. The tube, the OTA, the big well, fat the, OTA. The technology now is a lot different than we first started whatever 20 30 years ago whenever we started doing i mean now uh, if you want to give me one second i know you got to get out in about 10 minutes no but, you uh, go ahead you go ahead watch it yeah. what's he got what's he got Ah, our oh, friend. Said, there we go. Now, I mean, like nobody would have thought. And let me move this so I could see. Um, what oh, yeah. Hold on a second. So let me see what I'm doing here, so I can get back in the camera. So nobody. I didn't would see have, these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Nobody would have thought that I could have an astrophotography rig. I'm holding it with my. I'm a righty. I'm holding this up with my left hand. It's a go-to equatorial mount with a camera and a lens attached to it and an automated focuser. Mm. I mean, nobody would have thought that that would be around ever when we first yeah. started. You know, we, yeah. we were lugging around an entire truckload filled with accessories just to get a picture of the moon. Now I'm yeah. doing... Uh, I'm all stuck with wires here. Now I'm doing nebulas and, and everything with, with a 200 millimeter lens on a yeah. camera on a mount that I can put in a suitcase. Yeah, that so, really is a viable, a beautiful and very viable rig. Uh, in, and it actually, although the, some of the components you've got on there are hot and, and juicy, but you could mimic that rig for not a huge amount of money, for no. not the cost of a, for not the cost of an 8SE, for instance. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, right now, I mean, I think the the AZGTI is 399 That's a uh, great price. Um, the, uh, well, the camera was like, I got it for 640 I got it on Astromar for 649 Uh The lens was That's like really seven, nice. lens was $700. I mean, there, there's a nice What's lens. The, What's the lens, please? It's a Canon 200L. It is the Canon, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, and I got, just got the uh, Astro Dad focuser and. Uh, oh yes, yes, the Deep Sky Dad. Now, have yeah, you yeah. used that? Have you had first light on this? And and uh, um, because we were talking about focuses, kind of. Okay. Kind of. So not on the mount. I was kind of using it as like a, a <laughs> you know, I was doing one of these, trying to get. Oh the yeah, moon. yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I did get a picture of the moon on my phone, but I'm not, it's not worth sure. even putting on. But I, I was able to get focus and everything was fine. So you uh, verified so the I, focus. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking probably 
you know, maybe Friday or Sunday I'll have first light on this thing. So that'll be nice. Okay. Uh, we got a lot said. more comments coming through again. Yeah. Pile, pile in. It's the bits of show. Let's do the comments. Yeah, so we got Jesse. Uh, I have an EQ6R, so I'm not worried about loading collimation. Um, yeah. I could do that. I'm just thinking about some of those galaxies that were so small in my field of view. The first time I ran the autofocus, it was a thing of beauty. It was short-lived. I can't seem to get my step size right. Um, right, okay. Okay, but well, okay. step step size and SG Pro means going back to the uh, the setup on yeah. a clear on a clear night, not a marginal night. You want it to be crisp for this night, and then you want to defocus that star. D double check your tutorial. Defocus that star out, um, and then let SG Pro work its way in. And then you've got to do your calculation, haven't you? You've got to deduct the way you were. You're going to take the big number, the small number away from the big number mm -hmm. and then divide it to get your step size. And then hopefully when you have done that, hopefully when you've done all that and you give it a nice average starting position, you should see that V curve every time you focus. The reason I wasn't seeing it every time I had intermittent results, I think was due to backlash or, or slop, as, yeah. uh, as we say over here. In, in the in the commonal garden islands slotly slotly somewhere in my focuser so i'm not saying i've given up on it i would just seek it i swapped rigs out for one reason or, and another so do persevere with it do let us know but yeah it's back to the drawing board and uh, it means burning this is something that um when people are learning quickly uh and, and i'm not saying that that's you jesse at, at all this is from my perspective, when I'm learning quickly, I don't want to lose a night's imaging to to refining equipment mm -hmm. uh, and, and making things like um, so. Perhaps some of my focusing issues might have me be might have me been rushing it or being a little bit slapdash with my with, with, with the technicalities and the, the minutiae of the settings. Don't think so. I think it's just just slot, but it does mean burning a good night. I, I wouldn't ever try and do fo focusing, setting up focusing, setting up guiding. You have to use perfect nights. You can't, you can't, uh, uh, yeah. Um, Unfortunately, there's loads of other things you can do on a marginal night, but not doing your focus offset, I'm afraid. Yeah, and if uh, you want to. And, and to be honest with you, depending on what focus you have, I'm sure that you can get the step size from the distributor and finding out what kind of either the stepper motor or 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 whatever uh, you, you, you might do from moonlight. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm again could be talking out of my hat. Some other people, they're not all um, absolutely encoded. Yeah. If true. if that's you're true. trusting a stepper motor to be absolute and it misses one step, then yeah, that that is true. That is true. I, I could well. I don't know. I could be wrong. Ron, Ron Moonlight. With the my experience of Moonlight is that it always seemed to return to to the same place yep. every time. It was yep. a very I, fine those, engineered those piece. motors that they have on it are just unbelievable. I mean, I, they work perfectly. So right. Well, this um, is good. I'm, I'm just sorry to drag this one on. That's why I like the batten off mask or the diffraction spike mask because if you really want to prove your autofocus are out. Get the autofocuser to do its job. Pop a batting off mask on for a second opinion. Defocus. Get your autofocuser to do its job. Pop the mask on again. Is it back in proper focus? And I was finding variances. And then I thought, hold wow. on a minute. If I'm getting these variances, and then I'm getting variances between my filters, and I'm having to manually knit out, put a mask on double check it sweeten the focus up a little bit i thought oh, hold on a minute do, do i really then need at what point do i then will i then need because it's not a true remote observatory i'm 10 feet away from, from the from the focus probably my next need will be the longer focal length from the wobbliness however yeah. how, however it could have been down to me but I would forever more, unless someone can tell me, can someone tell me, or can you, Dad, tell me if a batting off mask is subject to variance? Is that, is that the law of focusing? I mean, it, I, I've always been told you get that little spike in the middle, yep. and you're in, and I'm, you know, it, it, I, it, 
that that's de facto. That's that's focused. Yeah, as far as, far as I know, okay. I mean, you know, I I have not heard anything that that there's you know one diffraction but you know just as, the only thing that I could think of that there's a variance is 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 a human variance of yes. what you judge as where the center of that spike is. Now, gotcha. You know, that's the only thing I could think of because it's a piece of plastic. You put it on there, it's going to be the same all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know. This was but, right. This was my. If if it wasn't, my brain was going to turn to mush, and I was going to run away um, <laughs> and want to be looked after. Uh, what but, else? But, you got? But, we got, we got yeah, more sure. stuff. Going sure. On so here. SG Pro, I would I would personally verify it with your baton off mask be before going. I'm in focus. Yeah, so I still don't know. Uh, she's oh, she's using a uh, Pegasus Focus Cube. Right. So pretty they're good. Pretty, they're pretty good. I mean, I haven't had a you know what? I haven't done a lot of work with them doing it, but I've used them quite a bit. Okay. Um, I've never taken a picture with one, but um, the Schmidt Cassegrain ones though are dreadful. They oh. are so slow moving that mirror back and forth. It okay. takes forever. But okay. the, the, the refractor, uh, the focus cubes themselves, not the Schmidt Cassegrain, the regular ones. Focus are... cube is going to be um, my next consideration for an autofocuser. Yeah, for a refractor, it's awesome. Yeah, okay. For okay, a refractor, folks. it's awesome. Um, I'll let you know. Let's see. Uh, Mark, I uh, see Dan Janicek is back on my buddy Dan from Long Island. Hey, Dan. Hey, um, Dan. Great focus for the moonlight at a great price. Their stepper motors are awesome and repeatable. Um, Agree. Mark has a question on the moonlight. Don't they require you to remove, replace your your internal focus? I'm guessing you mean the original focus, Mark. And yeah, if you yeah. actually have a, I have a video of uh, I think it's like three hours, and I actually hurt my back doing it. Uh, <laughs> um, I sat down and I, I believe I sat down in a chair while my friend did the did the surgery on my scope to get the moonlight on. But uh, you actually have to buy a flange um, that to fit the moonlight into your your scope. Yes, and all the flange, they, he sells flanges for every type of scope you can think of. If he doesn't have one, he'll make it. He'll make so, it. Yeah. So so he's got a machinist there. He does it all on in New York. So I mean, it just uh, he's just awesome. So. But yes, uh, you do have to take off the uh, the original focus on whatever refractor you have, and then you put the flange on, and then you slap the uh, moonlight on, and then you're good. Um, if you're brave and big, it's 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 nerve wracking, especially especially with the eighty Esprit. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The eighty Esprit, it's got, you know, I don't, I don't know why they do this. I don't know why they do this with the eighties. Uh, Explore Scientific does it, Orion does it, Esprit does it. The eighties don't usually come with a dovetail. They come with this boot. Oh yes, yes, uh, yes. I have a boot. A, yeah. you, this, you know, this is going to be yeah. good for 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 leveling the scope. It's not. It's horrible. But what happens is with the Esprit, and when you take, it's got. It's got these nuts inside the tube, and literally this nut is probably about three inches away from the internal optical element. <laughs> it's like really, really close. So I'm sitting there with a little hand wrench, <laughs> just doing it softly just to get this thing out. And it was, it was easy to do, but it was just very nerve-wracking, especially when you spend that kind of money on a three-inch scope. But um, uh, just be careful if you're doing it, that's all. Um, yeah. Jesse said she definitely missed a few good night nights of using a focus cube. Thank you so much. I'll be watching this video again to listen. Thank you for your advice. Um, Steve Flanagan is also using a focus cube too. It works great. Hey, Steve. Um, Jesse said, by the way, Dan, I have used the weighted batch pre-process in Pix Insight. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, you like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Dan Janicek, uh, that is why focus programs provide an absolute focus number versus a batten knob mass, which could be subjective. That's uh, what we were just talking about with the way people look at things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Dan also says hello to the both of us. And Mark has been thinking of Moonlight for the Esprit 100. Mark, mm. do it. Just, just do it. Get rid of the rack and pinion, you know, just get rid of it. Slap you, you will not 
be disappointed. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Just get, the, and if, you know, just get, if you're thinking about going all the way with the focuser, and you might be thinking about getting the rotator, I would suggest that you get the duo controller with the moonlight. So if you want to expand, you can, as opposed to oh, okay. the mini controller, which only uh, does one motor. Uh, uh, do you need the duo if you're going to get the, may I say it, Dan? No, no, you the don't. The night crawler. Oh, the, well, the night crawler has got everything built inside. That's you don't need that. That's mm. everything's kind of in a nice little package. It's not, is that I, is that what the gentleman might like for his one hundred, Daniel? It, a, absolutely, if you can afford it, knocks yourself yeah. out. But you're yeah. probably going to spend just as much for the Nightcrawler as you did for the Esprit one hundred for the <laughs> so, Yeah. So, so um, yeah. I I want to say that the the Nightcrawler fully blown two and a half inch model is about two grand. So so for a focuser. I don't know if you want all the bells and whistles and it's, I, I, I want to say the, the highest bell and whistle Nightcrawler has a rotator built inside it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's an awesome piece of machinery. And I remember when they came out with it two years ago at Neef and they, 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 they came out with it then. And it's awesome. He was, had again, he was thinking of their Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is ridiculous. Dan says. So, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's an awesome mm -hmm. piece of machinery. If you can afford it, knock yourself out um yeah. i have the regular one i do not have the night crawler um i, <laughs> I, I have these yeah that's it that's it but i mean i'm telling you um it's it's it, it all takes is money man <laughs> it's all oh. it takes it, it's all it takes but you know what just be careful you know do what you want to do uh the mm. night crawler is awesome if you can afford it uh, if you can get it get it um it'll solve a lot of problems uh, Dan said it even makes coffee. I don't know if that's true, but if it does, I need some. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one more question. Uh, this actually we spoke about before from Steve. Uh, there is there a rule for guide scopes? The larger your OTA focal length, should yes. your focal length be accurate for guiding? Thanks in advance, Steve. Yes, fo yeah, the, the focal length rule, which I forget. I don't, you can remember the actual rule, can't you, Dad? But yes, the bigger, the bigger your, the longer your focal length, the longer the focal length of your guide scope. So that's a mini guide scope. You would not want to use that on, I think this one runs out about 500 millimeters. So here's a very okay. short focal length, very really dinky, tiny little thing, only okay. good up to about um, 500 millimeter focal length. And so what's the focal length of uh, that? That's about 150. 150. So I so think 150, 200. I'll find out in a minute. Very, okay, very so small. So what? from what I remember reading about the focal length of guide scopes to imaging scopes is somewhere between a third Right. And a half, I think, if I remember right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, right. A third seems to ring a bell for me. Yeah, a half, a half seems a bit half, strict. A, half, so half seems like to be a lot to me. Mm. Um, you might imagine having a, 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 a 150, you know, 127 refractor on top of a 8-inch Schmidt. Because yeah. that's what, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that wouldn't make much sense. So no. I'm, I'm, uh, but I'll be honest with you, that rule... From, that rule has been around a long time. That third rule, that rule has been around twenty whatever years. And when guide scopes first started coming out, yeah. Um, and I'm I'll be honest with you, I I think it's actually gone less, probably to even a quarter at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You this this reminds me where we have uh, touched on this. Yeah, we reckon that the um, I believe you said to me that the sensitivity and the quality of guide cameras now means that um, you can probably get away with a, a much smaller guide scope than you used to because an 80 and an 8 inch SCT which is what 2000 focal length yep. used to go together an 80 and yep. an 8 inch were kind of kind of buddies weren't they yep. yeah I have my 80 uh, ED Orion on top of my 8 inch Schmidt 
did you? Did you? Uh, did, yeah. Right, fish out a picture of that at some point. Oh, I, 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 I got to find it somewhere. I, I don't know where it is, but I'm sure I'll, I have a picture of it somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but my, I, my, I went to 200 my, GPS uh, with the 80. And uh, and then I went to a short tube 80, when it, you know, because the 80 ED from Orion was just an, when it came out, that was an awesome scope. Mm, oh, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Imaging, Kept you know, getting too much good pictures out of the 80. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I started using that for imaging. But uh, we yeah. also got another question. My guide scope is 242, so mm -hmm. about one half of my scope. Um, so that means he's imaging oh. at about 6, 550. Okay. Um, I don't know if you need something that big, depending on what guide camera you're using and how big the chip is. No, well, pr probably the thing for my my game with guide scopes is get the smallest one you can get away with, uh, for just purely for weight uh, and for yeah. tracking purposes, for, for you know for your for uh, kindness to your mount purposes. So that's why I like these these minis. Um, that little one I just showed you is a thirty-two millimeters. That's a Keep tiny talking. little tube. I'm talking, but I also have a 50 millimeter guide scope and a 60 millimeter guide scope. So you don't you don't have to go shockingly crazy. Um, 60 mil should do up to which is about 300 focal length. So 369 should yeah should get you up to a pretty decent refractor. So very similar to what you got. Ah, I can recognize that. Okay, this is the uh, ZWO. That's the ZWO, yeah. Um, both ZWO, everything's red, nice and red, ZWO, <laughs> or, or, or in England, it's a ZWO. Oh, not in and my house. It's a Z. <laughs> it's a Z here. It's a Z. And, um, this is, I want to say 130 millimeters. Uh, I wonder, what, right, right. I'll, I'll find out what my one is. So I thought they were pretty similar, Dan. I yeah, thought, they, so, but yeah, about one, 150, right. And I use this, I've used this yeah. with good results. On my uh, on my 127 Mac, <laughs> so oh, oh crikey, that's so, 1500. Sorry, yeah, how long's the Mac? 1500. 1500. Right. So so I've used it successfully with Excuse with me. that, and I haven't gotten. I think I got a, a, about a two minute shot off it. That's about it, and then I started seeing some stuff. But mm -hmm. um, two minutes on a, on, a, on a on a on a Mac with a 130 millimeter guide scope. I'll take it all day. But, yeah, that's um, incredible, isn't it? So that that busts the rule by by a long, by a hell of a long way. And that, and that's coming and that's coming out of Long Island, the worst seeing, worst light pollution place on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. Is <laughs> it? Is uh, it? What is it? One twenty for the mini? No, I thought it was one thirty. I could let, be wrong. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Let me say, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to have a quick look at mine without. Okay. Oh, okay. Here, I'm just looking at the spec. So my, this little thing here, the MG32 from El Terrestro, they're saying this is good for refractors up to 600 millimeters. So that that little tiny thing there will do a 600 millimeter focal length frac. But yeah, can I find it, its focal length? It no, is 120 for this. This is 120. Thank you, Matt, for the correction. 120 um, focal it, length for you. It's a 30 millimeter, I messed up, it's a 30 millimeter lens. 30, 30 mil lens, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think they're pretty similar. So, 126 focal length. I have 126, and they're saying this is good for 600 millimeter frac. So what would that so be, a like four, a, four like inch a frac? Yeah, so that's like a quarter, so. Yeah. Yeah, so. Mm. Um, they're bold. So I'm, I'm going to try that then. I'll try, I'll try this. I'll try the tiddler on um, on my imaging scope. And uh, but the, yeah, yeah. So so guide scopes as small as you can get away with is is my thing because you want the least amount of um, the least amount of uh, stacked weight on your on your rig. Yep. Yep. Uh, that, well, especially when you're dealing with the you know like the RAS and stuff like that. You could you could start if you. If you start putting something big on there, you could start getting into tube flexure and stuff like that. Yeah, so. heavy, heavy. Well, this was the thing, wasn't it? I just sold my off-axis guide. We can't say that. Actually, can we some, actually about uh, that? Steve uh, Flanagan just had a comment about off-axis guiding. Oh, hey, geez. Um, and uh, he said, uh, well, sooner or later, I guess you would move on to off-axis guiding on large focal lengths. Yes, you so, would. Sure, you, you could absolutely do that. 
Yes, I you mean, would. I, I wish I still had my off-axis guide. I loved it. I had to take it off because I needed the in-focus. Yeah. But, uh, but, um, uh, let's see. Uh, 240 guide scope for a 400 millimeter telescope. You can, that's uh, more than half. That's that's yeah. more than enough. That's <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Not, so that's an air, That's a scope in itself. Yeah. So so you, I mean, two hundred forty millimeter. That's all. That's a little bit bigger than this guy. So that's, that's, a, that's yeah. A that's a red cat. Scope. <laughs> red, yeah. red, yeah, red, yeah, well, red, well, red, red cats. What? Red cats. Two fifty. Yeah. Two fifty. Right. Two fifty. So, <laughs> so it's an imaging um, scope. It's too good for a guide scope. Let's see. Uh, Matt says queen size Tim, and he's laughing. Size queen. Oh, oh no, not queen size. Size queen. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had to. You really had to add the extra six millimeters. He says. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, these. Yeah, where where these um, telescope measurements happen, I'm sure a lot of the a lot of the seventy mil scopes, seventy one, seventy twos. It's all the same piece of glass, just with a slightly different variation of someone's interpretation. Of, of, of the measurement but yeah size is size is important that is a 32 to dance oh, nice. 30. yeah man. Oh, yeah really two millimeters really <laughs> um let's see if i could only use an oag on a rasa Right, well, I was going to dive in there and go, there are limitations. The, o, yeah. the OAG has its own limitations. It doesn't work with everything. It's not going to necessarily, again, slap me if I'm wrong, could, could make a mess of that lovely, uh, uh, of the imaging field of the RASA, having a, a, a guide cam sti sticking tangentially into it. Uh, what else didn't I like about the OAG? Using it with filters that weren't part focal meant refocusing. And that changed the that varied the size of my guide stars quite a bit enough for me to then would I notice uh, aberrations in the guiding? That's a really difficult one because um, weather conditions change so quickly in the UK. You can never really be sure whether it's the weather conditions changing affecting your guiding, or perhaps is it this variance with the the non focal filters. And having to refocus and the OAG bloating your guide stars, then we then we're into that argument about are bloated stars okay? Are slightly defocused or soft stars okay in guiding? And we're on. We've got a whole. We should do a whole show for guiding at some point. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, while you're imaging. In actual fact, we could um, do one the next time you're imaging live, Dan, or I'm imaging, imaging live. Uh, I'll get my guide up uh, okay. and take all the settings out and show everybody how to turn it to absolutely awful and then put it yeah. all back to nice again. That that there might be go. quite a useful one. Um, somebody said, uh, Mark saw a post where someone putting a Spree 80 on their scope as a guide scope. <laughs> nice. Somebody's got money to burn, let me tell you that. Mm. I mean, I... I'm I'm thinking that maybe that's just piggybacked, but I, I don't I don't know. But that seems you could, like a real expensive guy. Yeah, it'd be yeah, yeah, it would be. I mean, obviously there are situations if you if you you could you could switch around, I suppose. But that's a situation where I had a nice uh, main scope, and then I had a red cat, and I didn't have a guide scope. So on that situation, I put an off axis off axis guider on the red cat and was okay. imaging and guiding at the same time using the red cat yeah. uh, and the other scope but if i had just used the red cat I, I couldn't bring myself to ever use the red cat just as the guider um, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm, for, for those for those reasons uh, yeah. uh dan came up with a good point that the off axis guide or limits guide star options um it does oh because yeah because of the actual the, you end up with that smaller field of view the, the smaller pool to select from yeah very much so yeah yeah so, yeah that that's definitely a good point um uh, you know it, i never had a time you know? i never had a time when i never found a guide star guide star did you dan with your off-axis guider no, not with that. No, I, I had some great. I had the uh, S big, 
uh, off-axis guider that came with the uh, STF 8300. And yeah. I, once I got it settled and the focus down, I never had to move it. I just popped in my, my I barrel. Think you know. That was quite a lot of the issue for me, was when these things are slightly out of focus, you can't see a lot of the dim guide stars. Yeah. So it looks as though I was seeing a, a, a false representation when it was bang on focus, you can see all those dim stars, and then you've got sure. a choice of, you know, you've got lots and plenty to choose from. Nope. Oh, we just lost Tim. We just lost Tim. And, well, anyway, um, and uh, Mark Ellis say there's too much weight. I, I would think so. I don't know what kind of. Uh, um, scope that uh, they had the SB80, but it had to be something, I guess, heavy duty. Uh, maybe like a, uh, I don't know, really large, like a Toa 150 Takahashi. Um, <laughs> Dan, Dan, Dan said that uh, Tim is quarantined. Um, so uh, maybe they uh, took him, uh, God forbid, I hope not. <laughs> Let's see if I can get him back really quick. And I wonder if he'll come back. He may not come back. He wasn't feeling well. And let's see. Anyway, I don't want to have no dead air. Um, I hope he's okay. I'm sure it's fine. I, I'm sure he just hit a button. Um, my OAG in Bortle 8 Skies is really hard. Um, I could just imagine, Steve, uh, Bortle 8, I'm in Bortle 8, um, and it's not good at all. Uh, Long Island is a complete mess as far as light pollution is concerned. Um, it's, it's a disaster. Uh, I will, let's see, I'll show you what I've been working on, and it's really not the best photo, but I could probably show it to you. A little quick diffraction oh you know what i skipped right over that matt i'm sorry diffraction spikes um eh, you know what it really depends on what you want as far as this i don't personally use diffraction spikes um i don't even make them up because uh, you could do that in pix insight and in photoshop you could actually make star uh spikes um you know you get them you know naturally with a with a newt uh, because of the spider vein, but um, sometimes people like it and it looks nice and it looks pretty and and whatever. But uh, it really depends on on you and what you like. Some people like narrow band, some people don't. They think it looks cartoonish. Uh, some people just like H alpha because they like the black and white because of the space behind it. So it really depends on you and what kind of art palette and and art look that you that you're going for um so uh let's see if i can get this real quick uh let's see tim just texted me let's see you coming back <laughs> And he's trying to come back in. And sorry about the dead air. He's actually typing to me. Okay, so Tim is not coming back. He, he's having issues with his internet connection. Uh, so he said good night for now. And we'll see you next week. Um, we got some other questions. Uh, depends on what the part Tim was supposed to leave 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I know Tim wasn't feeling well and, and, and that's okay. I hope it's not too serious. I think he's just a little bit exhausted. Um, and Steve, to your point, uh, it depends what the target is and overpower the target. I, I definitely believe that, especially if you're doing like the horse head nebula and you got alternate right there. Uh, super bright star if you start doing diffraction spikes on that 
Uh, next thing you know, you, you're spiking right through the flame nebula. So, so that, that could be a big problem there. Um, he must have DSL. God, I hope not. I, uh, he, he actually got some pretty good upload speed. So uh, I'm just trying to see if I can get this rolling for you. Uh, let's see. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, we're going to do this here. Screen capture. I think that's this. Yeah. All right, so let's see if I can do this for you. And what I'm going to do really quick before we go, and I'll show you what I'm doing here. Um, and I'm going to... Let's see, I'm going to pop this a little bigger. And we'll make this a little bigger. Okay, and you can have the screen now, and I'm going to start up Pix Insight real quick for you. And hopefully my computer doesn't crash. And since uh, Tim is no longer with us, I'll just show you what I've been working on. And I believe it's March 8th, 2020. Yeah, we'll do that one. And we'll get rid of the rejection high, rejection low. We'll just do a really quick kind of, there we go. So that's, uh, that's HA only. Um, that's not stacked. That's not anything as far as uh, as far as anything's concerned. But uh, that's uh, pretty much that's uh, IC eighteen oh five, and that is the uh, the heart nebula. And let me get over there. And that's what I've been working at. So um, <laughs> let's see, Steve Flanagan. Sorry, just got this live chat on Facebook. Is this? A weekly thing yes Steve it is a weekly thing um, and we do it every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Um, the camera is a um, STF 8300 monochrome from s big and this is a about I want to say it's about 460 minutes of H alpha information um, and this is in Border Lates, guys, too. So, so Dan, I, I, I hear you. Um, I save my color stuff. Uh, so whatever color stuff I could get, I'm actually working on a tech. Actually, my friend's working. I don't want to take the, the, the this guy. is just awesome with processing. But he's coming up with a technique uh, to kind of integrate RGB and all um, narrowband into one. So we can kind of do both a little bit. So he's working on something there. But um, this is with the uh, S Big um, STF 8300M with the um, with the uh, what call with the Esprit 80. Uh, no, it can't be used with the ASI Air Pro, uh, and I'm still waiting on mine. Uh, I'm kind of giving up. Um, I for those of you guys that uh, have been watching. Um, you guys know that I've been promoting a, uh, a uh, what you call it, a, uh, a, a stick um, for the, uh, let me put this on, uh, clear this, do this, and move it. Um, there we go. So um, I, I've been promoting a stick for uh, my little rig over here, the one that I've been working on, this guy. Uh, however, I moved and I'll show it to you. I actually got a mini PC uh, from these guys, uh, Minis Forum. Um, the PC stick that I actually put on a previous video, uh, I went through two of them. Um, and uh, as far as the power button is concerned, it was very, very flaky. Uh, so I had a lot of issues um, with turning it on, turning it off, and then finally it wouldn't turn on ever again. 
after I loaded everything on. So it was a big kind of mess. Um, and uh, it was just a disaster. So I got this. It's a little bit bigger, uh, but it's also an i3 processor as opposed to a Celeron. Um, it's got uh, more RAM in it. It's a little bit bigger. It's got three built-in uh, USB 3.0. Um, and I'm a little out of focus, I think. Uh, that's okay. Uh, oh, that's... Oh, wow. Oh, one. Try that. There we go. Um, can you not stack LRGB and narrow together? Um, you can. It just takes a little bit more processing. You can, you, you can kind of add HA to your red... Um, you can add them all together, uh, but this is a different type of process where you actually process the nebula in narrowband and the background stars in RGB. So you got to kind of, kind of do some stuff to do that. What is my dog? My, what is my dog barking at? My dog's a psycho. He's not barking at anything. They, 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 they drives me nuts. My wife's not home. The dog wants my wife. Here comes the dog. He, he, I just got to. Eat my box now. Astra, come here. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here, girl. Hey. Uh, she's a nut. She's a nut. Uh, can't help it. Um, she's a little psychopath. My other chihuahua just looks at this dog and, and whatever. Um, how do I like using CCD like SBIG compared to dedicated CMOS cameras? Like ZWO and QHY, what's the learning curve like? Um, well, you know, honestly, I really have had CCD the whole time. This is my first. This is my first CMOS camera, and I've yet to get first light on it. So um, the one learning curve that I've been dealing with is I've been trying to learn SharpCap a little bit better um, because I've been using uh, Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, quite a bit uh, and I've been using that for about a year and a half now and it's it's uh, works very well um, sharp cap uh, works with ZWO and QHY which is this and the CMOS cameras and uh, a couple of on finger lakes and a couple other guys um, but uh, this would be this will be my first well with the exception of guide cameras I mean I've been using ZWO for guide cameras for the for the forever uh, but I have not used, I have a 292, which I've never used. Um, I've been saving that for planetary. Um, and uh, I got this uh, 163 uh, for, uh, for this lens to see. It seemed to pair well. So uh, I'm going to give that a shot. Hopefully this weekend I'll get some first light on, um, on, on my first CMOS. But as far as CCD chips are concerned, I've, I've spoken to other people that have known uh, known good uses of CMOS cameras. Um, from what they tell me, CMOS isn't as sensitive yet um, as uh, CCDs and the KAF uh, chips and some of the older Sony chips. Um, but they're quickly catching up as far as sensitivity is concerned. So um, sooner or later, they will surpass. And it, the biggest thing about CMOS is the price point. Um, the CD, CCD chip is a lot more expensive. Um, but, uh, you know, right now I, I don't really have a, uh, a, um, a point of reference to compare the two yet, unfortunately. Um, but CMOS looks good. Um, the CCD, I love it. Um, I've never had any issues with it. And Dan saying goodnight. Steve says, my dog is telling me there's clear skies. No, there's no clear skies here tonight, unfortunately. Uh, but it is 10.35 p.m. Um, Eastern time. Um, and I, unless if anybody else has anything to say, uh, I'll give it a couple of minutes for some comments. Uh, but until then, um, uh, I'll, I'll give it till 10.40. And then we'll uh, say goodnight. But I think we may have a special edition Sunday night, maybe, if I don't have, I do astronomy classes, so so I do, uh, I help people with their rigs when they buy telescopes and teach them how to do it. But I may have one on Sunday. If I don't, um, then I'll be doing some narrow band imaging from my backyard, and I will probably be doing that live on Sunday evening. 
uh, Friday evening, even though it's going to be clear here, I will not be having uh, to do anything because um, I have a class, unfortunately. So, um, I guess everybody's saying goodnight. So, and, and my wife just walked in the door and so my dogs are going to be barking even more now. Uh, so, so uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Feel free, please uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Um, friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, let's keep this going. I'd like to get another 500 viewers in over the next couple of months. That'd be great. Uh, but please uh, keep supporting us. And thank you for the support that you have given already. Uh, please come visit us more again every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Uh, come with some uh, ideas. Come with some comments. Come with some suggestions, questions, whatever you want. And remember, uh, keep shooting. Keep educating. Keep having fun. My name's Dan Higgins for Astro World TV, and we'll see you next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Have a good night and clear skies.